is there, you know, in, in the real estate business, I'm assuming if you guys follow me and our clients, you're, you're in some sort of the real estate business, but uh, there are very few legends out there that have really been, been doing this for a long time and at a super high level, you know, there's, there's levels to everything, right? If, if you're doing like zero deals, you want to be doing your first one. Like I, I definitely remember that. And if you've done one deal, you want to be doing five and the guy doing five wants to be doing 10. And, you know, when I got to 10, I wanted to be doing 25. And, you know, once I got to 25 or 30, I'm like, this is great. And then there are guys like Brad Chandler, who's done thousands and thousands, probably twice as many deals as, as I've done. So super excited to have him in here. Just a very experienced investor. Spent a lot of lot of time, you know, building up his business and coaching other people. And actually he's done some, I don't know if he's going to talk about it too much, but definitely done some things that have, that have changed the industry. But yeah, over that amount of time, he still has that business running and he's branched off in a little bit of a new direction. I know that's what he's going to talk about today. So Brad, I know we're, we're I've held you up here a little bit. I want to get, get started. Tell, tell everybody let's, let's get it going. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited to be here, David. You have such an awesome uh, organization and following. So I'm honored to be here. You did say something that I wasn't planning on talking about, but when you said I've changed the industry, I did do one thing that I'm not sure. Pretty cool thing, dude. Pretty cool. I took on a massive undertaking five, six, seven years ago to get the We Buy Houses trademark canceled. And I was successful in doing it, but it cost myself and my partner $1.9 million. So didn't have $1.9 million laying around. So we we had, fortunately, he has a, a pretty wealthy friend and we got a loan from him and it really kept us in business. So that'll actually be part of, it wasn't going to be part of it, but, but I'll, I'll now weave that into the whole presentation. But yeah, so I have flipped 4,500 houses. I started in late 2002, an investor bought my neighbor's house in Vienna, Virginia. And I went and talked to him and he said, you know what? I buy houses at 30% below market. I fix them up and I resell them. And I was like, well, shit. I read a book in ninth grade on how to buy real estate with no money down, but it, I think it talked about how to like just hold them as rentals and get rich by paying off the mortgage. So I was like, I'm going to do it. And so I committed. My son was just born. I spent eight long months trying to find my first deal. And I'd go to these meetups and everyone would be making the checks and I'd be coming every week without a check. And But I got more and more persistent. And I was just like, if they can do it, I can do it. And hopefully I'll I'll go back and I'll tell you what that persistence was driven by in a few minutes. But anyway, so in July of 2003, I bought my first house. In July and August, somehow the snowball rolling downhill, I bought six houses. In October, I went to my boss at the time and I said, I quit. And I came home and told my wife at the time, I just quit. We're starting Express Home Buyers. <laughs> and she was like, have you lost your mind? We've got a newborn son who's a couple months old and I've got two kids. So what are you thinking? And I'm like, it's going to be fine. And here we are 4,500 houses later. We're not married, but uh, everything has been fine. And so if you, I don't know where, where you guys are in your real estate journey, if you've done multiple deals or if you're struggling, but this company now, 20... Two years later, we did 223 deals last year. We did 253 the year before. We're shooting for 300 this year. And I work a grand total of one hour per week. I show up to a 930 tomorrow, Thursday meeting. I get on a call like this and I listen to the numbers and I hear what's going on and I give some input if I have anything to say and it runs without me and allows me to do what I'm passionate about. And that's what we're going to talk about mostly today. This isn't going to be your typical webinar. Someone on this on this webinar is going to listen to what I say and their life is going to forever be changed. Their business, their relationships, their health, how they behave as a leader, as a father as a mother, um, everything is going to change for for at least one person. So uh, this is deep stuff. So buckle up. We're going to get really deep. Uh, David's a master at, at what he does. I know his business is just amazing serving real estate investors. And there's a plethora of people out there that can teach you the X's and O's of real estate, including myself, but it's not something I'm passionate about anymore. But what's really important is you can have millions of dollars at the end of the day, but if you don't have the things that are really important in life, and that's health, and relationships and a business that works for you, like what's the point? What's the point if you have a million bucks or two million bucks or five million bucks in the bank, but your kids have disowned you and you're about to get divorced and your health sucks and just you drink too much, smoke too much, whatever it is. So anyway, we're going to dive in. I don't want this to be Brad talking the whole time. I want this to be interactive, guys. So if anything I say is like, what the hell is he talking about? Or, or oh, I can see this in my life. Please speak up. Just come off mute. We're going to go for about 45 minutes. We're going to wrap up at five, 10 minutes before the top of the hour. So again, this is life-changing stuff, guys. I've 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 been where you are likely because I was struggling to, to you know find my first deal and now I don't do anything. So I'm sure all of you are on that, on that, on that, whatever, that 
scale somewhere. So, so speak up because I've, I've likely walked in your shoes. Can I, uh, can I share my screen now? Yeah, you should be able to share it. No problem. Okay. All right. Understanding the knowledge is power. So we're going to talk about literally how do we become more wealthy inside? So we create more wealth on the outside. So we're going to talk about the how to strengthen beliefs and and get the desired outcomes because most of us aren't living a life with exactly the desired outcomes that we want and there's no reason not to. So my old life, those 20 years leading up to or 17 years leading up to my transformation three years ago, I had two marriages that didn't work out. I had two kids that had major anxiety. I had two kids that had behavioral issues and and we had our ups and downs. I lost $9 million, my partner and I, over that 17-year stretch, making five critical business mistakes. One of them was taking on that We Buy Houses lawsuit. And I was a regular user of marijuana and alcohol. Like it, it made me feel comfortable in certain social situations where I wasn't comfortable. I had anxiety. So this is my old life. Before I went through this transformation, I, I was talking with a, a performance coach about three and a half years ago, and we were on a Zoom call and she's like, you have a tick. And I was like, what in the world are you talking about? She's like, yeah, you blink like crazy when you talk about your childhood. You may have some stuff from your childhood that's affecting your son's anxiety. Because I was talking to her about helping my son. And I was like, not me. I was like, I'm a single dad. I've been a single dad. I do everything for him. There's no chance, but okay, I'll, I'll, I'll come out there and work with you and your husband in a three, in a three hour stretch guys, laying in an Airbnb bedroom outside of Park City, Utah, my life forever changed. And I'm going to teach you today why it changed and how everything in my life has changed from relationships to finances, to my business, because I did this one thing that I'm going to teach you guys. So the first step to solving every single one of your problems, whether they be a bad marriage, experiencing infidelity, lack of deep connection, you don't spend enough time with your kids or your kids, kids have anxiety or behavioral issues like mine did. You have health issues. You're out of shape. You have autoimmune issues. You're overstressed, depressed, have anxiety. You get angry a lot. You get triggered. All these small things like, why am I always getting upset with these small things? You cope by eating, drinking, smoking, or procrastinating too much, or there's a general state of chaos in your home or your business man, did I have a lot of chaos in my business. And I'll tell you why in a second. Every problem in your life is a thinking problem. Change your thoughts and change your life. Who's heard this before? Who's heard that, that change, change your thoughts and change your life? Absolutely. Yeah. The problem is no one knows how to really do it. What I'm going to teach you today, guys, literally they didn't know about from Freud who died in I had a long time ago, 100 years ago or something, up until 100 years after his death, they didn't even know this new science that they know which I'm going to go over. So how in the world? So 99% of what I'm going to teach you today, guys, if you've been to therapy, you've been to a psychiatrist, you've been to a psychologist, you've been to a marriage counselor, you've had a life coach, you've gone through mindset coaching, 99% of people don't even get this stuff. They don't, don't even know because it's so new and they're not teaching it in schools. So this is literally every problem in your life is a thinking problem. What was my thinking problem? My thinking problem was that I didn't feel I was good enough. My dad hit me with a belt repeatedly. There was constant chaos in my house fighting over money. There was a point in time where we thought we were going to lose the house and I was going to have to move into public housing. And in my 10-year-old brain, that was I knew there were shootings there. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to die. My dad made fun of me. So all of those things, I wasn't locked in a cage. I wasn't sexually molested. You don't have to have these like amazingly big traumas to have stuff that's controlling your life that you don't even know. Most of this stuff, guys, is thinking that's buried in your subconscious mind that you don't even know. So we're going to talk about how you go about changing this. Who has heard of Dr. Joe Dispenza? Yeah. Definitely. Anyone else heard of Dr. 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 Joe? Yeah, he's a badass, right? He was hit by a bike many, many years ago and told he would never walk again. And literally using the power of his mind, he like healed his spinal cord injury. And now he literally teaches. I, I mean, he has thousands and thousands of people show up to his events like every couple of months, just they sell out in like five minutes. So if you don't know Joe Dispenza, do yourself a favor and go buy one of his books today because he is a, a, an amazing dude. He says to create something different from what you've grown accustomed to in your personal world, you have to change the way you routinely think and feel each day. So ask yourself, how can I think, believe, and behave differently so that I can produce the life experience that I want? Does everyone have exactly what they want that's on this call? No, of course not. No. 
who, who, who wants something different, whether it's a better relationship, more patience, more money, less weight, less addiction, like who, who, who wants something different in their life? And you guys have, you guys have tried your whole life to get whatever that thing is, right? Mm -hmm. Of course you have. Like whatever you desire, you've probably tried, you've probably gone to therapy or you've, you've, you've taken courses from people or you've shown up to masterminds and you see all these people making all this money. And if you're like me, you're like comparing yourself. Well, why can't I do that? So none of this stuff, this is, this is, this may be the most important thing. Any negative behavior that you're struggling with in your life that you have not been able to change, it's not your fault. Everything you want to change in your life is a perceived solution to a problem that your that your mind believes is more painful. Guys, I'm going to say that again because if there's one thing you take from this, this is what a, a, a therapist will never ever tell you or, or, or a life coach because they don't know it most of the time. Let's say that I have anxiety to get up on stage and I get all like flushed and my my chest feels tight and my my face goes red and and I start sweating. You're like you would go to the therapist and be like, well, my problem is I have anxiety every time I go on stage or every time my wife talks to me, I just shut down. Well, that's not a problem. That's a solution to what your brain thinks is worse. So maybe it's that if you get on stage and you mess up, people are going to disparage you and make fun of you just like your father did. So what is your brain doing? It's doing exactly what it sh is supposed to do. If you come home and eat six Twinkies every night or drink five glasses of wine, and it's just terrible negative behavior that's affecting your life relationships, but you can't stop it, every, si every single negative situation you have, again, is your brain's solution to something it thinks is worse. Are you guys tracking with me? Does that make sense? Yeah, 100%, 100% Brad, 100%. And here's the thing, guys. That thing that you think is worse, 100% of the time is an untruth. So your behavior and your divorces and your addiction and your company that like, give, give an example, I would, I would open new markets when I didn't even have my shit together here in Northern Virginia. Everything was, a, every negative thing that's happened in my life was my mind trying to protect me from this. I'm not enough. And if I can't prove that I'm enough, people aren't going to love me. And if people don't love me as a child, I'm going to die. So it's all, it's all survival. So this, what I just said to you, if you take nothing else from this, from this talk is that we're all held back by negative things in our life. If you're in a coaching program and they're telling you, Hey, you want to, you want to do more deals? Let's get on the phone and talk to more agents. Let's go to networking. Let's, let's call sellers. Let's cold call sellers. And you go to do that stuff and you freeze up. It's the same exact thing that's holding you guys back from getting exactly what you want in your relationship. If your wife is always like, why is it that every time I, I, I say something I don't like, you shut down or you do the opposite and you yell at me and then we fight for three days. You know who did that? This guy. I did that for, for two marriages. My wife would say something that upset me. I would turn it on her. I would, I would like literally say, well, you did this, this, and this. And then I'd go into my shell for three days. What was that? It was, it was my mind saying, you can't be who you are and share your emotions because if you are, if you do, the love will be taken away from you, just like, just like happened as a child. So what do I do? I'm not going there. I protect myself. So whatever you're struggling with in your life, it's not your fault. Figure out what it is, find the untruth. And then what you do is you just do some work to prove to, to, prove to your mind that negative thing is a pathway in your brain. Here, here's the neuroscience behind this, guys. That I'm afraid to get up on stage because my father will, someone will disparage me just like my father. And if my father disparages me, it means he doesn't love me. And therefore, if, if I'm not attached to my father and I'm a child, I die. All of the negative programming in your head, by the way, guys, comes from your childhood, believe it or not. So that's a neural pathway. We have millions of neural pathways. That's a neural pathway. So what you do is you show your brain, you get yourself in a state of getting nervous. Oh my God, I'm getting on stage. And that neural pathway becomes changeable. And then you, 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 you ask yourself, well, where in my life have I spoken up and messed up and not been disparaged and made fun of? And then when your brain comes up with that, it literally, it's like taking an Excel. Who's, who's used Excel or, or Google, Google Sheets, it's, it's called, I think. You've got a formula in, or you've got $123, like let's say in a cell. You can go in and you can change that cell to $260, right? It overwrites the 123. That's exactly what, what I'm telling you. That's exactly what your brain does. So when you do the work and you, you prove to your brain that this negative thing that you've been running from all your life is nothing more than an untruth, 
it rewrites that neural pathway. And then the negative behavior goes because there's no response anymore to walking on stage because you're safe. I want to pause a second because I, I want to make sure you guys are with me. Like are in your head, are you thinking about, I wonder what, I wonder what the negative th belief is that's driving my behavior to whatever it is that you want to stop Would anyone be willing to, to comment or share or ask me any questions based on what I just said? Yeah, man. I mean, the, the thing on, the thing on stage definitely, definitely resonates because, because that makes me nervous, right? I get up there and my chest constricts, Luke has seen me a bunch of times, but uh, yeah, I definitely get, get nervous up there. So yeah, hundred percent. I, I definitely have that problem. And so can you see, it's actually not a problem, David, yeah. it's actually yeah. a solution to something you fear is worse. And that thing that you fear is worse was created likely 30, 40 years ago in your life. Mm -hmm. And the thing about trauma is that it doesn't know time. So when you're yelling at your wife or yelling at your kids or your business in, dis in disarray or you're feeling anxiety, it's not the adult. It's the little kid inside of you. It's like, hey, I'm, I'm hurt over here. So yeah, yeah. it's just protecting itself. Yeah. So you know, I moved from, from Florida to Boston as a little kid, like seven years old. And the kids would make fun of me because I didn't have the same accent as them or I had a different accent. So yeah, lots, probably lots of that kind of where that, well, some of that started or, you know, being a, a chubby little kid and getting me being made fun of. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so your, your thought, I don't know, cause we haven't never d done a deep dive, but say your thought is I'm not enough. Or if I put myself out there, like show up to class, people will make fun of me. So that little boy is the one that's driving the negative behavior. So when you go to get on stage, your mind is thinking, no, don't put yourself out there because when you do like showing up to a new school, people will make fun of you. So that's the painful thing. So what we would do is we basically like, well, was that, did that have anything to do with you, David? And you'd be like, no, that was just the kids that being kids and being, they were probably hurt from, from their childhood. And and, and they were dealing with their own stuff. That's how you rewrite this thing. So any other, anyone else want to comment or, or ask me a question or say, Hey, you know, this is, this makes no sense, or this is great, or give me something here. In, in my world, it's like, yeah, I was just doing it for two hours before this, but trying to cold call, find some deals off market. My brain just goes like, do something else. Like, we don't want to be doing this. I don't know if anyone else has shared the same thing. I don't, yeah. I think most people don't love doing the cold calling, but it's kind of like a necessary evil if you want to get, reach your goals. But I certainly, my brain tends to wander when I'm doing it. Yeah. So, so did you specifically say cold calls is where it, it, it wanders? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Do you, when you go to make a cold call or when you think about, Hey, I got to start cold calling in 20 minutes, do you feel any sensations in your body? Yeah. I mean, I don't know about sensations, but generally my mind starts thinking like, what else could we do? What other tasks do we have to do today that we can maybe replace our time instead of this? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's just where my, where my brain goes with it. But it's kind of, like I said, it's a, it's an important part of the job. You have to, you have to do it. So personally, I just block off time and there just make, there's no excuse, right? Like today I had on the calendar nine to 11. Not, so nine o'clock I sat down and just like turn the brain off, but it's a, it's a challenge for sure. Yeah. So, so that's a complicated one because there's a sense that there's purpose in, involved as well. I'll tell you that. Um, so I invested with a friend about two years ago. Um, I still haven't gotten paid back because it's, it's a partition lawsuit in South Florida where he bought a portion from the mother, but the daughter's still in the house. And he, it was a deal. We structured it with a, with like an option and there was some creative stuff and he sent me the paperwork and it was like, 20, 30 pages. And guys, I didn't even read it all because it was like pulling teeth, right? I found out now after 20 years of doing real estate, that the reason I got into real estate was always, it wasn't about the passion for real estate. It was that I thought it would make me a lot of money and prove my worth. So I don't really love real estate. I don't hate it, but I don't love it. So I had a really hard time reading this stuff. But if you look at the bookshelf behind me, I've got all these psychology and neuroscience and trauma books and behavior and everything. I could literally go right now to a beach, set up an umbrella, and I could read for eight hours a day, literally for the next 10 or 15 years and never once get bored with it. So again, complicated example. I'm glad you gave me this, Jeff, because it's important. There's a, there's a, there's a, a portion of it that is, what is your brain scared of when it comes to cold calls and what are you hiding from? You, and you can fix that. There's another component that, that are you doing what you love to do? It is this, do you wake up every day and be like, man, real estate's the thing? Or are you like me who got into real estate to, to fill a need that I wasn't enough? Most people that have these underlying beliefs that are causing addictions or overeating or depression, anxiety, whatever it is, those, those, those limiting beliefs that were, that were from childhood, uh, I completely lost my train of thought. So, oh, oh, oh it's, I, I came back. 
if you have a limiting belief, and at the end, we're going to share share a quiz where you can actually figure out if you've got these, these limiting beliefs. Then I lost my train of thought again. Wow, I've got so many thoughts in my head. Sorry, guys. We'll come back. We'll come back to that one. Oh, purpose. If, if you have these limiting beliefs, guys, you're basically in a fight or flight state, which means the tiger's chasing you every day. How in the world can you figure out your purpose in life? Does anyone on this call know what their purpose is and are they living their purpose right now? Not a single hand went up. It's because when you have these, these untruths that are driving negative behavior, you likely spend 70 or 80% of, of your time in a fight or flight. We weren't designed for that way. We were designed to spend 10% of, of our time in fight or flight. When we left the cave to go hunting, that was when our, we were supposed to heighten. But now with social media and everything we've got going on in this world, we're in this fight or flight. You tell me, how in the world can, number one, you be a great business owner, a father, a husband, or figure out your purpose when the lion's chasing you. So what you do is once you figure out these untruths, you are literally killing the lion. Then you can sit back, take a deep breath and be like, oh my gosh, what is the best thing I should be doing in my business? Should I be cold calling? Should I be opening another market? Should I be hiring someone? What is my life's purpose? It's nearly impossible to know that when the lion's chasing you. So thank you, Jeff, for, for, for sharing that. That was really helpful. Again, guys, any questions, any thoughts, any comments, you stop me at any point in time. So this is the real magic to what most mind coaches, life coaches, therapy, they're missing this. 99% are missing these three things. First of all, you've got to realize what is driving the behavior that you want to change. So much of therapy and life coaching is, okay, you have anxiety, let's counteract that with some breathing. Well, you have anxiety for a reason. You were not born with anxiety. Something is creating that. Let's, instead of trying to put a Band-Aid on a cut that's like spewing blood, let's figure out what was the source of that pain in the first, what's the source of the anxiety? That's the only way that you're going to truly heal it. Putting Band-Aids and breathing exercises, or if you drink too much, like, oh, let's take a different route home so we don't go by the liquor store. None of that shit works. So if you're like thinking like me, I went through 50 different marriage counseling sessions. None of it ever worked. And now I'm in a fantastic relationship. Why is it? Because I figured out these demons. I figured out these, these beliefs that were, that were limiting my behavior. So number one, you got to realize it. Number two, now they know through neuroscience that remember we can take that pathway just like the XL cell and we can rewrite it. We can recode it. It's called neuroplasticity. They didn't know about this shit 25 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. And then finally you get to rewrite the life to exactly the one that you desire because every single one of us, despite what we are told, deserves to be, have a healthy business, have a healthy body, have a healthy relationship have kids that 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 like to spend time with you. you. We all deserve this. We just don't know how to get it because of this shit that's buried in us that's driving our behavior. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we gain a deeper understanding of what is hap what's happening, what's driving it. We reprogram it, and then we take back control of our life so that we can manifest our dreams. It's really literally that simple. So you may be thinking, I get this a lot. A lot of people have this internal drive, these challenges that they have this insatiable thirst to prove their, their worth like I did. And a lot of people are like, well, Brad, that's the, that's the secret sauce that drives me. What if, what if I fix these internal problems? Am I going to lose my, my drive as a result and not be successful in business? Has anyone had that thought? Is that a fact or a myth? It, it, it's a gazillion percent a myth because when I shifted three years ago from trying to make a bunch of money to prove my worth so that people would love me. And I, and I realized in that Park City bedroom that, oh my God, it wasn't me that wasn't enough. It was my father. It was my mother. It's how they treated me. It was my way of protecting myself. Because guess what? If it's their fault, I'm screwed. We as children often internalize the problems. It's our problem. Because guess what? If I'm not enough, all I have to do is be enough and then... David, the kids will stop teasing me at school. My dad will stop hitting me. My dad will stop making fun of me. So every problem you have, you know, your parents fight, they get divorced. We inter my dad's a drinker. He's depressed. We internalize that and we say it's our fault because if it's our fault, we can control it. If it's their fault, we're screwed. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. So when I shifted, when I realized, oh my God, this wasn't about me being not enough. This is about my father. That weight lifted off my chest. I killed that proverbial lion. And I said, oh my God, I don't have to spend another second of my life trying to prove my worth. So what do I want to do? I've got to give this gift back, this amazing gift, because everything in my life has changed. 
I have an incredible relationship with my partner, life partner and business partner, Yvonne. My relationship with my kids is better. They don't have anxiety anymore. I'm in the healthiest I've ever been. My business is running like it's never been. My net worth has jumped in the last three years like it's never been. Why? Because I focused on making an impact instead of making money to prove my worth. Every single one of you can do this. Everyone's in real estate. David, you're in real estate and in title. Every day, wake up and, and instead of being like, how do I make more money? Ask, how do I solve more problems? How can I be a better fiduciary to that seller? How can I, the little old lady who's you know in, in Dallas and it's 95 degrees and she has no air condition, go buy her an air condition. Start to figure out how can you impact things in life. And when you focus on making an impact rather than trying to make money for the sake of feeling better, you're going to see the money is going to come like it's never come before. Any questions or thoughts around that? It's amazing. Focus on making an impact, not on money, and the money will follow, right? Absolutely. And ask yourself, do I really love real estate? Am I doing it just for the money? And maybe you can do exactly what I did. Maybe you can get your business to a point, and you can. If I did it, you can do it because I had nine, my SAT scores were 980. I graduated high school with a 2.79 GPA. So if I can do it, you can do it. So maybe you can get your business on autopilot or maybe working 10 hours a week to pursue whatever it is in life. Every single one of you was put here for a massive mission in life. But if you have these underlying beliefs that are driving negative behavior, you haven't found it. So maybe you can use your real estate business to get out of life exactly what you want. And if you're like, well, how do I know what I want? First, you got to kill the tiger. And then you go back to when you were six, seven, eight years old. What did you just love to do as a child? Because that's probably it. I, I've did this exercise a couple of times. I love transforming stuff. I love teaching people. I loved like doing a landscape project in my mom's yard. Now I'm just transforming things in a different way. I'm, I'm helping people transform their lives. I'm coaching people around that. So every single one of us, has a, a, a purpose and desire, uh, not a desire, a purpose and a mission in this life. And, and I really believe finding your purpose is a real key to happiness. I would like this right now, what I'm talking about, guys, we could stay on here. If I didn't have another call, I could literally take your calls. We could bring in your wife, your kids. I could talk about this until I literally passed out in my chair. Real estate, it was never like that for me. When I look back, it was all about how do I make more money? I'd go to these, these masterminds. I look at, you know, Mike Osborne worth 50, $75 million. And I beat myself up. Like, what's wrong with me? I come home and tell my wife, I'm an idiot. No, you're not an idiot. I'm not smart. These guys, it was all around this not feeling enough and trying to do more, 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 more. When you don't feel enough, guys, it doesn't matter how much money you have in the bank. It will never be enough. So I'm going to give you, it's incredible how much how time flies. I'm going to give you a tool, guys, here that literally can change your relationship with your spouse, your kids, change you as, as a leader. This is called, we call it the joy regenerator. And I want you to put your energy into what you want, not what you don't want. So when we explore life with curiosity and every challenge or, or change is an opportunity to grow, our life changes in amazing ways. Stop judging yourself. Stop judging others. Stop negative talking yourself. It doesn't do any good, I promise. Instead, come at it from curiosity. Why am I eating so much? Why am I drinking so much? Why is it that I get so angry? Why is my business in chaos? Why is Johnny not showing up on time? Why can't he close the deals like I've trained him? Instead of being judging and fear, just get curious. And you'll see if you just do this one thing, start getting curious. Ask yourself, why did I go to the gym today? Why do I come home and drink three glasses of wine? All that stuff, just be curious. So anytime you guys, you, you feel a negative emotion, it's your brain and body saying, You've got work to do. You are in a negative, you are in a fight or flight state anytime you feel a negative emotion. So what I want you to do is just pause and breathe. Whatever's good for you. The Navy SEAL box technique where you breathe in for five seconds, hold it for five seconds, breathe out, hold it for five seconds. You can do that, whatever. But by breathing, it's going to get you present. And then I want you to identify the emotion. I'm feeling anxious. You're trying, getting ready to go on stage, David. I'm feeling anxious. Okay. Most of us didn't get compassion as a child for emotions. Now you get to give the compassion and heal everything that you didn't get as a child. That's the beautiful thing about being an adult. So just say, instead of like I would do and beat myself up even more, what's wrong with you? Why are you, you know, you're, you're nervous playing in this golf tournament. Like what an idiot. There's no bombs dropping on your head. That's what I would say. Now, if I get a little bit nervous playing in a golf tournament, I just say, it's okay, Brad, I got you. It's okay. You're feeling anxious. Now identify the root cause. Where is this coming from? And this is what we do when, if we were to work one-on-one -on -one or work with my partner, Yvonne, is we figure out what the root cause is. In my case, I've given it to you. So when I feel any negative emotion, my root cause is always goes back to I'm not enough. 
as you're doing this, just think of three things that you can be grateful for. And then ask yourself, is the original thought true? So now guys, what used to take me five days to get out of like a fight or flight in, in a triggered state takes me five seconds or five minutes because every time I feel a negative emotion, I know it's my childlike self saying you're not enough. So I say, am I enough? Absolutely, I'm enough. You're enough. You always were enough. You always will be enough. So why am I going to feel sadness or 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 despair or frustration or not or anxiety after over a truth, an untrue thought? It makes no sense. So you want to use this in your relationship tonight? Go home and when your wife or, or spouse or whoever says does something, say, hey, Janet, John, Jimmy, this isn't your fault, but what you said or did made me feel sad or anxious. Can you help me process it so that I can feel that I can heal and we can be better connected? Is this a little different than, well, you did this, this, and this, and then it turns into a fight. Like you can use this with your, with everyone in your organization. When you do this work, guys, you're going to become a better leader, bar none. Any questions around that? Good morning, everyone. Brad, can you hear me? I can. Yeah. I was just dropping off my kids and I didn't have a chance to say anything. Every time you, you asked anything, I was just like, I, I have to keep dropping my kids to school. But anyway, yeah, uh, thank you so much, first of all, for the very, very, the, the speech you're giving, it, it moved me. And I'm thinking like, yes, it is so true. I don't know, speaking on uh, just for myself, everything you said, is, it makes sense to me. And I, every one of us probably have very different and uh, life story and, and whatever and from a background that I was hardly allowed to go to school and work, I was just a woman to produce kids and, you know, how some cultures look at women. And um, I'm very thankful that I'm here now and um, I'm free to do whatever you want. I'm a mom, I'm a wife, and I'm a, I'm a compromiser and I'm a fighter. I, with my family, I compromise. No matter what they are, I compromise because this is my family, my immediate circle, and I want to keep it tight and hold on to everybody no matter who what they are who they are how they behave or I see my failure in my kids like okay they're not the way I want to raise them I I want to I want to compromise and fight and then whatever life throws at me I want to fight I got this much courage and strength from a very rough lifehood I had and I get a lot of things from my friends like oh I'm I'm strong I'm this and that but I don't think myself as, as a strong person but yes I'm a little bit different from others I'm a hard worker but you're absolutely right whatever you said from the beginning I was like listening and I, I was just comprehending it and digesting it and getting it and practicing it in my life thank you so much you're welcome. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I'm just going to reiter reiterate what you said and what I said. Every single problem, guys, that you have in your life, whether it's your health or your business sucks or your relationship sucks or your kids have behavioral problems. If your kids have behavioral problems, it is your issue. It's not theirs because kids only misbehave for one reason and one reason only. They lack a connection. If you lack a connection with yourself, which you will if you experience these things, then how in the world can you be connected to your child or are they connected to you? So yeah, every single thing you, you mentioned, like, you know, compromising. Well, it, 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 I'm not saying you do this, but that, that falls into the category of people pleasing. Why do we people please? Yes. Because we don't feel enough. So, so one mm -hmm. of the doctors I've studied under said some of the most aggressive forms of breast cancer are from these ladies who, you know, one person in particular, when the doctor gave the, the diagnosis, she's like, oh my God, how am I going to take care of my husband? Well, there was nothing wrong with her husband. And he's like, this is why you have the cancer. Like, like when you give, 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 and True. you don't give from a full cup, you're not, you're, you cannot give the love and everything that you need. So people say being selfish is selfish. It's just the opposite. You have to take care of yourself. If I asked you for, for 12 oranges and you didn't have it, how could you give it to me? You, you couldn't, right? So if you lack self-love, and we're going to give you a link here in, in a bit to, to take this quiz. It takes like two and a half minutes. If you lack self-love, how in the world can you teach your kids how to? I believe the greatest gift that you can ever give a child is to teach them how to break this multi-generational curse that most of us are involved in. And what does that mean? We just pass this down, just like I did, generation to generation. I didn't feel enough. My kids didn't feel enough. The greatest gift you can give is to break that. How do you do that? How in the world do you do that? You teach your kids how to love themselves unconditionally. How in the world can you teach a child to love themselves unconditionally when you don't? If you're negative self-talking yourself and you're drinking every night and you're eating your face off and you are doing self-destructive stuff in your mat, all that stuff is an indication that you don't love yourself unconditionally. 
And that was that you weren't born that way. You created that to protect yourself from something. But that was as a child, as an adult, you no longer need that, that protection, but your brain doesn't know the difference between you when you were six and when you were 46, because that's what the subconscious mind, if you shake a bush and you're six years old and the tiger bites you when you're 86, you don't want it to forget. So that's why we operate. All we are is a bunch of adults walking around this world as in, in adult bodies, but we're really six-year-olds. When you're fighting with your spouse, it's two six-year-olds fighting. That's it. Can you tell I'm passionate about this stuff? Yeah. Wow. I have a question though. Intellectually speaking, I, I get it. I'm a pretty smart guy, like we all are. How do you take it from understanding it and, and put it into actual practical use we can do on a daily basis? So this is this right here is a is a tool that you can use anytime you have a negative emotion. It's that hurt child inside of you. So this is this joy regenerator, which you can download on our on our website at unlocklimitlessu.com. You can use it. It's 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 a sheet. So that's it. But first, Terrence, is you can't, it's going to be really hard to just, it, this will help you for sure, but it's going to be really hard to having that, that underlying belief that we've talked about that's driving it. If you don't identify that and solve that, it's going to be really hard to make progress in your business or your relationships or your health. Does that make sense? Makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. Okay. It goes back to the original thought. It goes back to the original thought. And, 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 and guys, I didn't wake up for 20 something years when I owned the business saying, I'm no good. You know, I got to go buy a 42 foot boat when I don't know anything about boating and taking it to the Bahamas. No, but I did it because the subconscious mind was yelling at me. You're not enough. You got to open more markets. We know when my second wife left me, you got to go date a bunch of women because she didn't love you. So you got to go prove that other people love you. None of this was conscious. 95% of our behavior guys on a daily basis is driven by our subconscious mind. But life coaches and therapists want to focus on your conscious mind. They want to focus on the 5%. What's the point of that? It's like going into your business and, and having like this little thing that like the, the paper clips you buy are too expensive, but a business consultant comes in and wants to spend eight hours talking about your paper clips. You're like, dude, it's not my paper clips. I got much bigger problems. We all have much bigger problems that are hidden. And most of us have no idea that they're, they're driving our negative behavior. Your relationship problems are never about the actual relationship. You got a bad relationship and you're going to, to marriage counseling. Good luck with that because marriage counselors don't get it. It's about the relationship each of you have with yourselves. Have you been divorced before? Have you gone through like relationship after relationship? I keep attracting the wrong person. Yes, your subconscious is attracting that person likely because they're just like the person who created the stress and trauma for you in the first place. But you won't hear, you won't hear that from marriage therapists. So we've got a, just a couple minutes left. These are the four phases of transformation. And as you guys do any type of work, you just have to have compassion. So number one, let's, let's use an example. Like I'm going to stop yelling at my daughter, which I committed to a year ago and I've done an amazing job because it really bothered her. So I'm going to catch myself after and recommit. So I yell at her and I'm like, oh my God, I'm not going to do that again. Second is you catch yourself doing it. Hey, Ella. And then I stop. The third is you catch yourself before I'm going to go to her room, knock on the door, yell, oh, nope, I'm not going to do that. And then the fourth is you don't even think about it. This is where I'm at with negative self-talk. And I used to have a lot of negative self-talk. I called myself an idiot on the pickleball court a couple of days ago or a couple of weeks ago. And it was the first time in like 18 months I've said anything derogatory about myself. So you guys can get here too. You just have to have compassion. Get out of judgment, get out of fear and operate in curiosity and love. I'm going to skip this slide. I was just going to tell you how, how great my life is, but everything in my life is Look, it's not perfect. Like I, I have, you know, because of my childhood, I've got plenty of money, but I still get nervous sometimes about spending money on silly stuff. So I'm working through that. But in, in, in general, my life has changed so drastically. I can go out now to a bar, karaoke. I can sing and dance. I can go to a gym and talk to a girl. I don't need weed or alcohol anymore because I know that I don't have to prove anything. And I've, I've gotten my freedom and you guys can do this too. So this is a guy, I don't know if you know, Brent, he's obviously said this publicly and said I could share this. I know David knows him because he's in our, in, in our mastermind, but he came to me with overwhelm and racing mind. And so as we fixed that, not only did that help, but his relationship with his wife, his kids have gotten so much better. He's working less. He was working a ton of hours. So many of us work a ton of hours because we have low self-esteem and we don't feel we're enough. So we got to keep working, 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 working at the expense of our relationships. He's stressing less. And he's like, in the six months that I worked with you, my income is literally, literally doubled. So again, once you get out of this fight or flight, the world is your oyster. Everything happens for you.
You can believe that or you cannot believe that. I don't believe things happen to you. I believe everything in your life happens for a reason. Sometimes you find out a day later. Sometimes you don't find out for years, but everything. So literally, I don't ever have a bad day or you know, my, my tire's flat. I can't go play golf. Well, maybe if I'd have left at that second, a tractor trailer would have hit me leaving my neighborhood. So I just think everything that's happening for me is happening for me. You guys get to live your life this way too. So if you're curious, like, hey, I wonder if I've got these limiting beliefs, go to unlocklimitlessyou.com forward slash quiz, take the quiz. And if you, if you know, there's, there's a, there's a way you can work with us too, if you want to, and just make sure that you mention David, because he's, he's taken the time and effort to put this together. And we have two, three, four, five minutes. Does anyone have any questions, comments, concerns, anything that I can, I, I can address based on, or anything for that matter? Guys, I put that in the chat, so it should, yeah, we should be able to just click it. Cool. Just a question, Brad. So we talked about all beautiful stuff. How to, I love real estate, not only because the income you want is un, unlimited. You can you can make as much as you want. It's also, I love real estate. I, I, I have passion for making homes beautiful and look good and then sell it or whatever. How do we, how do we make that? Just a new, sorry, my English is not good. I'm trying to make sense. So I just, I did like maybe, maybe 14 or 15 flips and um, I've been doing this for five years or something because I my kids are my priority um, so when I have time I make time for this business after taking care of my kids how do I expand this business how do I go faster and and I, I just have to say that I do have a goal it's not only for myself I want to help do those who are unfortunate or less fortunate to have the opportunity to make money and for orphans and especially for girls. Uh, that is my my goal. And I had this five years ago. I haven't reached my goal yet, but I'm on my way. I will make it happen one day. I mean, so so you asked a question that would take hours to answer. I'm going to try to distill it into, into 30 seconds. I love it that you have a passion about making an impact on young girls. So I want you, I want you to use that to drive you every single day. And the number one thing that you can do for for those girls because anyone who's an orphan has gone through trauma 100% not not 99% 100%. So by healing yourself and being the bright shining light and everyone can do this, then others you can help others, but you've got to get yourself in a place where you can help others. So number 1 is uh, focus on that impact. Number 2 is 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 heal yourself from your wounds. And number 3 is the, the business part of it. You're likely doing five, ten dollar an hour task. You know, you you're, you might be doing stuff in the closing process. Let David's team handle that stuff. Hire, go hire a VA for five to ten dollars an hour, and and get rid of the stuff so that you can do stuff that generates revenue. And then you hire the next person. Maybe it's a salesperson. Maybe it's a marketing person. We spend over two hundred thousand dollars a month in marketing for our our fix and flip company. You don't need to do that, obviously. My point is, we do it every single month. We don't spend two hundred thousand dollars and then say, "Okay, we're going to take a break." I know a lot of new investors do that. They get a couple of deals and they stop marketing. You've got to consistently market. Thank you. You're welcome. And I saw some emotion coming up here, so there's something here. So I would, you know, tonight or journal or meditate and be like, "What was that that he said or that I thought that created this emotion?" And and it's healing when when we cry. It's 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 yeah. great. Like there's something Absolutely. there. There's there's something there. So thank you. You're welcome. Got two more minutes. Anyone else want to chime in and ask a question or feedback or anything? Right. I think what you're what you're doing is is fantastic. The you know uncovering that underlying problem that they the reason to. I think it's I think I think it's absolutely amazing. I can't I can't wait to take the uh, the quiz. Guys, it's life-changing stuff. You may think it's woo-woo and you can continue thinking that and living the life that you do. There's nothing this is why we changed the name from Brad Chandler coaching to limitless you. You are absolutely limitless. But what you you cannot become limitless until you figure out the stuff that is driving the negative behavior. And when you figure it out, oh my gosh, life is going to become really grand. So I'm going to end on that note. I'm grateful that you guys spent an hour with me. If I could help in any way, just reach out to us on LockLimitlessYou.com. Take the quiz, have your spouse take the quiz, have your kids take the quiz. And that could be the first step in a journey that literally changes your life forever in a good way. Brad, thank you so much for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. That was incredible. I, you know, I get the the pleasure of doing a couple of these uh, a month and that was, that was really special. So I would definitely encourage you guys to, you know, go take that quiz and, you know, let's see what are the things that are, that are holding you back from, from getting to where you want to be and having that, that life that you dreamed of. Cause all of us got into real estate being entrepreneurs for a reason. And you definitely want to you want to achieve that, right? You don't want to get to the end of your life and be 60 and go, oh, geez, if I just, you know, 
Maybe if I had just taken that quiz 15, 20 years ago, my life would uh, would be completely different. So click on it. It's a free quiz. I'm going to do it here just uh, in just a little bit. And yeah, and man, I appreciate all of you showing up. And Brad, thank you so much, man. That was, that was really amazing. I, I do appreciate it. Thank you. Take care, guys.